Hey there team and welcome to an update, although this one's not on Iceland. We're going to focus today on some activity that's been going on on the Big Island of Hawaii in Kilauea. Thanks for joining me. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. Today is January 31st, 2024. It is about 12.45 p.m. Mountain Standard Time in the afternoon. And what I'd like to do, this is a pretty brief uh, update, just go through some of the latest data that we're seeing in at Kilauea, some of the things have been happening there. Uh, the biggest thing that precipitated this, of course, was the USGS raising the activity level of Kilauea from yellow to orange, which is a, a warning status. And so, you know, it doesn't mean necessarily that an eruption is going to take place, but there are some signs geologically going on where it seems like an eruption is, is very possible. So let's go ahead and take you into Hawaii and just because this is um, my first update on Hawaii in a while, I did do a series of updates on the Mauna Loa eruption in December of 2022, but I wanted to set the stage a little bit here with volcanoes in Hawaii and make sure all the viewers there uh, were familiar with that. So the Big Island of Hawaii uh, is home to five volcanoes. Kohala in the north is extinct. Uh, it erupted. Uh, half a million years ago. Don't expect it to erupt again. Mauna Kea, which is the tallest mountain in and the tallest volcano in Hawaii, is uh, considered inactive. It's sprinkled with a number of cinder cones. It's, it, it's a late stage volcano. Uh, and so while we might get another eruption there, uh, it's most likely pretty much done with in terms of eruptive activity. On the west side, of Hawaii on the Kona side, there's Hualalai, and Hualalai last erupted, uh, I think, about 200 years ago in the year 1800 to 1801. I just put out a video showing some of the xenoliths, the green, uh, olivine rich, and uh, pyroxene rich chunks of lower crustal material that were carried out by some of these eruptions. You can see uh, some of these eruptions that went down to the coastline, the airport, the international airport's actually built on some of those lava flows. You can see these other ones here that went down to the north here um, in that area. And then the two big ones, the two bigger volcanoes that are definitely active is Mauna Loa, which is the largest by volume. You can see all the black lava flows here. Um, up until last year, its last eruption was 1984 but we had the eruption uh, on the Northeast Rift Zone here in December of 2022 uh, in this part of the, the island in the central part. But Kilauea is the focus of today. It's the, it's the youngest volcano in the chain um, other than the one that's offshore. It's the one that's been the most active over the last few hundred years um, in terms of uh, just activity. And it's composed of two discrete rift zones. So all these volcanoes also have rift zones, basically places where these volcanoes are so huge and massive in terms of the amount of lava, dense basaltic rock that accumulates at the surface that they generate a tremendous amount of weight. And so they do tend to shift towards the o ocean and that opens up on their flanks, these rift zones. So by having it being a, a zone where the rocks are spreading apart, those become ideal places for magma to intrude and be injected. And of course, the East Rift Zone was famous in, in 2018 because we had eruptions occur far on the, the um, lower part or the eastern part of the Rift Zone, which uh, erupted in Leilani Estates, created lava flows that went all the way to the coastline, destroyed a lot of homes there. So upwards of 700 homes were destroyed by these uh, very hazardous and destructive flows. But where we're seeing the activity taking place now is in the upper part of the Southwest Rift Zone. And this has not had an eruption since 1974. So now that I've kind of oriented you a little bit with these volcanoes, they all have a summit caldera at the, at the, at the top of these big, broad shield volcanoes. They mainly erupt lava, although there is a history of explosive eruptions at Kilauea, but dominantly what we've seen most recently and what we expect in the near term are these effusive flows of fairly runny lava along the flanks or at the summit. So let me get you right to some of the data and let's just jump to the USGS site which runs the Hawaii Volcano Observatory. So we have a group of scientists there that are charged with monitoring the volcano, issuing updates and alerts, um, working with local officials if an eruption looks likely or is in 
is in the process of occurring. And so just today, what prompted this update, and again, I just have a little bit of time because I'm dealing with classes and, and trying to keep an eye on Iceland, but Kilauea is another place that's near and dear to my heart, having taken students there uh, five times and having visited it six times total. Um, but they did bump the the, co the alert level up to a watch level. Um, and so, and I'll show you what precipitated that, but let's run through their quick update here. So the Kilauea volcano is not erupting, uh, increased earth activity and inflationary ground deformation at the summit began occurring during the early morning hours of January 31st, so that's today, indicating movement of magma in the subsurface. Uh, so they raised the, the code, the alert level, from yellow to orange due to this activity. At this time, it's not possible to say with certainty if this activity will lead to an eruption. The activity may remain below ground. However, an eruption in Kilauea's summit region within the National Park and away from infrastructure is one possible outcome. Patterns of earthquake activity and ground deformation are concentrated south of the caldera region, so that's near the summit. Any new eruptive activity could occur in or near Halimauma'u crater or the region south of Kilauea crater within the closed area of the park. Uh, and they're working together with everything, they're monitoring everything there. So let me show you the earthquake data over the past, this is just the past day. If we add in uh, the whole week or so, you can see the summit caldera of Kilauea, um, and then this trend, which is not necessarily on the southwest rift zone, but it is on the southwest flank of the volcano. So if we were to get an eruption, it could be out here in the southwest rift zone region, or it could also be within this confined uh, caldera. So since, um, I guess, 20, well, even before 2018, but uh, typically what we've seen at Kilauea is a summit lava lake uh, here and this thing has had all sorts of changes over time so we expect maybe there might be something there there's little to no earthquake activity down the east rift zone heading down into this region uh, these other quakes down here are much deeper quakes and more related to the the island slipping and and moving um, into towards the ocean so they're not in they're not indicative of magma movement but these are the quakes we're kind of focusing on. Again, that's the last week. And if we just look at the last day, so just the last 24 hours, we can see you know, the cause for uh, alarm here. 400 quakes within the last day, 24 hour period uh, near the Kilauea summit. And that's, that's am that among other things, along with the GPS data is what prompted the USGS to start to uh, bring the alert level up to that orange level, that watch level. So there's uh, one way of looking at the earthquakes, just using the USGS site. And you can see there's a broad uh, linear trend, a, a southwest northeast trend there. The main rift zone is over here where you see some of these past lava flows. And this goes all the way down to the ocean. And this last erupted in 1974. So it's much more likely that the next eruption would be in the summit region, but it is possible at some point we could get something. Well, we will get something in the South Rift Zone in the future, but may not be this swarm of earthquakes and this, this series of events that might be taking place now. Uh, if we go to the USGS monitoring data for Kilauea, um, you can see they've got several plots here that are instructive. So this is the past week, so from January 24th to January 31st. Let me make that a little bit bigger. That might be a little bit helpful there. Um, and you can see the clusters of earthquake that the summit caldera is somewhat hidden, but is right up in this region here. Some of these bigger quakes, the color coding on their quakes indicates depth. So the reds are very shallow and then orange and then yellow, green and blue as you go deeper. And so many shallow quakes near the summit region, uh, the size of the circle indicates the magnitude. Looks like there are a few in there that are in the three range. I don't think I see any fours in there. And then they show that plot in another way is just to show it as a cross section view. So basically imagine uh, a slice across this east west and then plotting those same earthquakes up. So there's those deeper ones there. The blue ones are these ones near Pahala, these deeper seated quakes that probably not related to magma intrusion. And then we have these shallower ones here around the Kilauea summit. And then as we head off towards the east and into the east rift zone, just very few earthquakes over in that area. 
Um, this is a plot of the total earthquakes over time. So you could see a week or so ago, uh, January 25th, 26th, 27th, not a lot of earthquakes, but then you could see this bar graph in blue really spiking upwards as the number of earthquakes has increased over the past few days. And when you plot that data up in terms of day, so this is not a cross section, this is just plotting earthquakes and their depth up over time. So here's January 25th going up to today. You can see the earthquakes really start picking up uh, just after January 27th and into the 28th. So over the last three or four days, the, the frequency of earthquakes, these shallow magmatic earthquakes has really jumped up. And there is one there is one bigger one there. That probably is a four. So there's at least one magnitude four in that data cluster there. So it's the earthquake data that has led to this along with the deformation data. And so this shows at a given, um, this is a little different than the Iceland data we've been looking at. This is a, this is tilt. So this is just not so much measuring GPS movement up, down, east, west, north, south, but basically it's a tilt meter. So it's measuring very minute changes in the tilt of the Earth's surface. And you can kind of see it going up and down a little bit. These are in micro radians, so they're very um, precision increments here. Uh, but then you can see the important thing to look at is the past day or so where this thing is really ramped up and then and then dropped down. And so we've seen uh, a really steep trend and change in the tilt there. So that in combination with the earthquake data is what's likely led to the USGS uh, increasing the alert level or the advise the advisory level, I think is probably the better way to phrase that. If you go just to the main uh, HVO site, um, it's a really nice map because it has, you can uh, take the earthquakes off if you want, uh, right here, so the earthquakes are gone, or you can add them back in. You can also see where their GPS um, stations are, so you can, and then you can zoom in if you want to and look at, let's say, let's look at, uh, let's look at this one down here, this GPS station. Oh, maybe that one doesn't have any data. Let's find one. Here we go. So this GPS station, if we look at the last two years, now these are more similar to what we've been looking at with Iceland. Um, they're in a different order though. So their first graph is showing east-west motion. Okay, so we can see it moving upward. So that's moving to the east. Their second graph shows north-south motion. So downward would be southward motion. And then the bottom one is the up and down motion. So you can see it not moving much. And this goes back to, uh, this is a two year plot. So, uh, but you can see over the last, the end of 2023, over the last two or three months or so, uh, in a definite upward movement uh, and an inflationary trend there that the magma is moving into the subsurface causing the ground to rise in at least looking at this in aggregate. Um, again, I'm not, I'm not gonna spend too much time looking at all the individual stations, but you can get in here and look at that. Here's one near the summit region. Again, with this really pronounced kick upwards in the data over the last few months. And so it seems like they've been in a state of inflation in terms of magma moving upwards over the past um, past few months. Uh, you can also, let's see, let's zoom out a little bit. So it's a nice little website to play with if, if you're interested. Um, you can add also, let's get rid of the GPS. You can see where the cameras are, the webcams, uh, you can look at gas data, um, where the seismometers are located. And then you can also see where past lava flows have occurred. And so this is a map showing where it keeps putting the earthquakes on because it thinks those are important and they are. Um, but you can see where these past lava flows have occurred. I have a better map I'll show you here in a second, but just wanted to introduce you to that, that site. And I'll make sure that's in the video description if you're interested. And then here we have a really nice map that was just put out a week or two ago that summarizes the the past, uh, what, 270 or so years at Kilauea and where lava flows occurred at different points in time. And so this is the summit region right here. So you can see 2023, we had a lava lake there uh, at different times over the past year. Um, you can see those 1974 
southwest rift zone eruption over on the left here in yellow. Um, other eruptions that took place historically on the southwest rift zone going back to 1815 or even back to 1790. And then uh, all the different eruptions on the east rift zone, including that 2018 lava flow that I talked about that uh, destroyed 700 or so homes in the lower east rift zone. Um, dominantly, for 35 years, we had eruptions from Pu'uo'o, one of these vents on the East Rift Zone, and these lavas mostly went down towards the ocean um, where they were, uh, were not very hazardous at all. So nice little map there just showing some of the history in terms of lava flows in the East Rift Zone and other parts of Kilauea. And then last thing I've got here is just a nice simple uh, they've got webcams, so if you're interested in kind of watching things going on, uh, you can do it through their site. But another way to do it is through, they have it on YouTube. So there's a USGS site, and this is looking, I believe this is looking east. Yeah, from the northwest side of the rim looking east at um, the the summit crater. So all the steam you see, that's just degassing. That This is, there's no active flows in the crater presently. And I can show you that, I think, um, yeah, by the thermal camera here. So this view here, this top image, and this one just below is the same one. It's just looking at the, the still cooling lava flows or that lava lake uh, at the summit of Kilauea. So even though it looks hot, it is hot, but it's not, not necessarily molten, it's not flowing, it's not erupting. Uh, it's just cooling nice and slowly. So they've got a, a thermal camera on that as well. So pretty interesting. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to do a very brief update again on Kilauea. So I'll kind of keep my eye on this one while I'm also monitoring the situation in Iceland. So hopefully you find this valuable. Be, be interested to know what you think of all this if you're interested in uh, monitoring Kilauea as well. Um, obviously there's more well, I should maybe take that back. I mean, they both erupt pretty often, and so they're probably both worth monitoring. My sense is that Kilauea erupts a little more often. If you just looked at days with lava on the ground, uh, it's a little bit more active system perhaps than parts of Iceland, but they're both pretty interesting and worth monitoring. So um, just a brief update. We'll continue to watch this. It'll be interesting to see if this were to uh, culminate in a southwest rift zone eruption, that would be super interesting. Um, or will it be more of what we've seen the last few years with the lava activity confined to the, the summit caldera here up near the summit of Kilauea? Also, may, maybe um, enticing a few folks. I, I, I haven't totally committed to it, but I've got uh, the idea and the plan to do a field trip to the Big Island in 2025, probably in, in the summertime. But uh, if you're interested in that, you can reach out to me. We're still a long ways from that. I'll make a more formal announcement later. Um, but this is an area I've, I've taken students to five or five times, six times over the last um, 15 or so years. I, I know the Big Island really well, and it's just a fantastic place to see and observe geology. So with that, I'll go ahead and sign off. Uh, we'll do another update on Kilauea if there's enough information or something picks up or anything that I think warrants an update. But for today, I thought the increase in the advisory level to the warning status was probably worth uh, looking at the data and maybe having folks take a, take a little glance here at Kilauea and, and see what might be happening in the short term. So thanks again for joining me. Appreciate it and have a great day. Take care.